Hi everyone, my name is Pardis Madavi, and I'm the Dean of Social Sciences here at Arizona State University. And I'm very excited to be able to share a case study with you that I like to call Becoming a Jedi. So bear with me as I share my screen and share my slides, and you can get a copy of the slides uh, at, at any point in time. So what does it mean, Becoming a Jedi, and how did I choose this case study? JEDI stands for Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. And it's a framework that a group of us here at ASU have been using to transform higher education. It's a framework that foregrounds justice and a call to action to bring about meaningful change in higher education that centers justice. Now, we developed JEDI to address the structural changes that needed to be implemented in the areas of curriculum, climate, and culture and to illustrate experiences in addressing systemic issues and developing and implementing solutions. So rather than just focus on compositional diversity or a checklist that DEI allows us to focus on, we develop JEDI as a call to action, as a commitment to the structural changes that we feel that need to be implemented to create an ecosystem of change and success. Now, JEDI itself came to fruition out of a series of successes and failures that I'd like to walk you through. <clears throat> so I've had a lot of personal experience and I've been working for the last decade or so in thinking about the transformations that need to happen in higher education in the realm of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So on the path to developing JEDI, I had a number of road bumps. In 2016, I was still at Pomona College and I was the Dean of Women. And we were struggling. It, within one year at the Claremont Colleges, there had been three suicides and all of them had been students of color. We were failing. There was increased campus unrest, not only at Pomona College, but across the country and across the globe. Students were unhappy. Students were speaking up and saying that the higher education, the world of higher education that they were immersed in did not meet their needs and did not mirror the society that they wanted to see. We began to dive in very deeply to do the DEI work, but we probably changed too quickly. Among the very first things we did at Pomona College was thinking about changing the structure of the handbook, the faculty handbook. We decided that we would change the promotion, promotion and tenure process by adding diversity as a significant factor in assessing promotion and tenure, but we probably did so too quickly. We changed the handbook to add diversity and diversity statements as a required component of promotion and tenure. We also added a fourth question when we circulated surveys to all students. We used to ask students to comment on what the professor had done especially well in terms of teaching, research, service. We added a fourth question and asked students to provide us feedback on what the faculty member had done or not done well to foster an inclusive classroom. Now this was incredibly successful in the sense that students felt seen and heard. However, there was a strong backlash from faculty who felt that they were not yet equipped to do this kind of work. Faculty felt very strongly that they didn't know how to change their classes. They didn't know how to implement an inclusive class, how to implement changes that would create an inclusive classroom. And we realized we had moved too quickly and we saw the backlash that followed. Fast forward two years, I was the Dean of the Corbell School of International Studies at the University of Denver. And there we were also part of a culture change and a curriculum change that was so desperately needed. Students were studying international affairs and international studies. They were preparing to go out into the world and be bridge builders. However, the curriculum didn't affect the world around them, didn't reflect the world around them. They didn't have courses on reflexivity and positionality. They didn't have courses that asked them to reflect on the dynamics of difference and power, and yet they hungered for it. And so we began the important work of infusing, infusing cultural change through changing the curriculum. We added a requirement that was called the dynamics of difference in power, and we infused the orientation in all mandatory student gatherings with an analysis of the dynamics of difference in power. Now, this was incredibly successful once again at the student level, who, who felt very heard and who felt that they were getting important tools. But it was challenging for faculty, once again, who didn't understand how the curriculum needed to be, uh, how their particular curricula could be changed and what the dynamics of difference in power look like on an individual level. Again, 
The failure here, the lesson that we took was, in order to create meaningful lasting change, we have to create an ecosystem, multi-pronged. We also learned through the very many bumps and turns and twists on this journey, that there are a number of red flags to watch for when trying to implement a JEDI framework. One is changing a requirement without doing the work of cultural change or changing too quickly. We realize that it's important to socialize things by having workshops, book groups, reading books, reading groups, which is what we did at Pomona College and later at the University of Denver. We created workshops on how to create an inclusive classroom, how to create inclusive syllabi. We had reading groups and book groups where we read books that allowed us to be well versed and conversant in the language of the dynamics of difference and power. So we realized that the cultural change was just as significant to creating a lasting ecosystem for success. Another red flag to look for was creating DEI as a, treating, G, treating DEI as a checklist, just a checklist of things that need to be accomplished rather than something that every individual who lives in the ecosystem has to continue to work out every single day. Related, another red flag to watch for is appointing one DEI officer and not investing them with power or resources. Putting everything on one person's plate absolves a lot of people of the responsibility that every single individual needs to take to create this healthy ecosystem. We realized also it was important to provide how to's and the language that was necessary to make the shift. And we needed to foreground action. What are the individual actions that individuals can take? And so JEDI was born. As you know by now, JEDI stands for Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. It's a new framework for addressing the decades old problems of structural and epistemic violence within academia. The hallmark of this approach is action. By foregrounding justice in this work, we foreground action and a call for meaningful structural change. JEDI also offers us a new way to engage in equity work that goes beyond compositional diversity and avoids tokenization. JEDI refers to structural change for which everyone is responsible. Through JEDI, we will empower our entire higher ed community to engage in change. So how do we enact JEDI? How do we create an ecosystem where change can succeed and take root? Here are some of the multi-pronged approaches that we are taking here at ASU at the college to create an ecosystem of success where all JEDI can thrive. We're developing a curriculum that is more inclusive of what we call the Dynamics of Difference in Power, or DDP, across academic programs that more clearly articulates and informs our efforts to seek justice in the domains in which we work. Let me be clear, we intend to have this curricula, this suite of offerings that we call DDP, draw from all divisions and all disciplines across the university. And to do that, we're enacting workshops, we're engaging faculty, staff, students, and our wonderful JEDI committee to think about what these curricula might look like and what kinds of tools faculty, students, and staff might need to bring these to life. At the same time, we're creating new co-curricular activities and reorienting existing ones to address head-on the challenges of racism and the pursuit of justice, both in the world at large and in our own university. We're implementing specific policies and initiatives to consciously diversify the faculty, staff, and leadership within the college and its constituent organizations. We're committed to change at all levels. We're supporting and leading through similar initiatives across our network of activities and in other academic units at ASU. And we're lending our voices to advance university-wide efforts and initiatives and committing sufficient effort and resources to see real results across these areas in immediate one, three, and five-year timeframes. And it is important to have milestones and markers that can be achieved in a one-year, a three-year, and a five-year timeframe. So what does JEDI in action look like? Here are just some examples of things, of actions that we have started to take to create this ecosystem where justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion can thrive. Diversity statements are now required, not only for job applications, but as part of the promotion and tenure process. And workshops on how to read and write diversity statements are going to be provided. How to read the diversity statements is just as important as how to write them, which is why we're educating search committees on how to read and process the diversity statements that candidates provide, as well as committees on promotion and tenure. This will be a five year long process, but we are committed to the change in year one. We're committed to changing the promotion and tenure process in collaboration with our academic units to look at how we can recenter JEDI in the promotion and tenure process and how we can reward the work that so many of our colleagues are already doing in this space. 
We're centering diversity as a hiring strategy, and we've implemented and rolled out a six-pronged diversity hiring plan that allows us to really commit to JEDI at every level, beginning with hiring and continuing through mentoring and success. We tried a new initiative this year called One College, One Book. As a college, we read the book White Rage by Carol Anderson and had a college-wide conversation on white rage and on the book. Next year, we will all be reading Ibram Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist. We feel it's important that all members of our community come together to engage in these difficult dialogues and to start to talk and brainstorm about the social transformation we would like to see in our ecosystem. We plan to mentor through the changes and we plan to infuse the dynamics of difference in power, not only into the curricula, but also into gatherings like orientation. And finally, we're developing a boot camp of sorts to be shared out across ASU and the community on how the dynamics of difference in power operate in our world and some of the strategies that we can engage uh, community-wide. So what are the things to look for if you're interested in implementing Jedi as a framework? Looking at how diversity is a strategy, not just a checklist, but a strategy that can be infused at all levels. Look for evidence of addressing structural challenges and the recognition or underscoring of invisible labor. Also look for demonstrated enlightened mentoring so that students, faculty, and staff at all levels can feel seen and heard as we enact these changes, which are sure to bring some uncertainty. It's important to create a plan rather than simply doing an action and a plan that allows action that will result in systemic change. The strongest Jedi are those who articulate how diversity is used centrally in rethinking things like budget, curriculum, and or access. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time to go through my case study, and I look forward to hearing any questions that you might have. Please don't hesitate to reach out at any time. Thank you.